Hey guys, Bridget here. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, auto layout and constraints in Figma. Now, these are really useful tools that are going to enable you to create design projects which are responsive and flexible so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel each and every time you're creating different uh, screen sizes and uh, resizing elements. So an example of this uh, is uh, right here. We have this model and uh, essentially let's uh, think about of a scenario where a project manager asks you to create uh, all sorts of different uh, screens for desktop, uh, tablet and mobile. Well, creating all of those different screens for multiple models can actually be really time consuming, but with constraints and responsive uh, auto layout features, you can create things like this in a matter of seconds. So it's really easy to do, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in this tutorial. And just before we get started, I want to remind you that I recently launched a course on how to get started in UI UX design. It's a free course, and basically I'm telling you what are my tips and advice that I wanted to receive when I first started out over a decade ago in this field. You're also going to receive free source files from these tutorials. But now let's go back into the video. So let's jump right into it. And we're actually going to restart from scratch. So I'm just going to create a frame right here, which is going to be our main frame. And uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to use the same background color as we did here. So essentially we, you can simply click on the, on the plus over here on the fill and select the background color. It's going to make it a little bit more wide. And uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're actually going to create an overlay inside. And uh, the reason is going to be clear in just a moment. And essentially what this overlay is going to uh, give us uh, is the ability to use the constraints uh, features, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So let's actually go in the main frame, which I'm going to rename to just to avoid confusion with this first one. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the fill in this one. So essentially what's happening here is that we have our main frame and then we have uh, this frame, which is essentially the overlay. And uh, the moment that I select uh, an element, so I'm just going to uh, copy and paste this element right here uh, inside of the overlay. Let's just be sure that it's uh, right inside. I can select the main overlay. And uh, what I have here on the right is the constraints options. Now, this is where the magic happens because uh, essentially what uh, these are enabling us to do is to set the constraints to either left, right, left and right, center or scale. Now, what does that mean, Pierre? <laughs> you might be wondering. Well, let's just center this and let's give it a shot and let's just give it left and top as you see right here. And I'm going to select the main frame and I'm just going to uh, stretch the frame. So as you can see, this overlay is set to left. So this means that it's just going to stay on the left side because uh, what this option is all about uh, is uh, essentially fixing the position horizontally of the frame to the left. But what happens if we, we put it on the right? Let's give it a shot. And I'm going to select the other one again. And this time things changes because as you can see, the frame is now, which is the overlay, is now set to the right. So it's going to stick to the right. Now, what do you think is going to happen if uh, we leave it at and we select left and right? Have a moment to think about it. Yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. It's uh, literally going to stick uh, both on the left and on the right side of the frame. Now, say that we want to also set the vertical um, position because at the moment the vertical position is set to top, but uh, what if uh, we set it to bottom? It's going to be very similar to what uh, we did just a moment ago with uh, the horizontal one, which was set on the right. So it's going to be on the bottom section. Now, if I go on the overlay and uh, I select top and bottom, 
you can see that now, or actually I selected the wrong one, I need to select the top one. And as you can see, now is, uh, is both on the top and on the bottom. Now, you might have uh, noticed that uh, there are also uh, some other settings, just center, and this, of course, is going to center the frame. And uh, the very last one is scale. So it's basically going to maintain the scales very similar to the top and bottom in this specific instance. Now let's uh, uh, go ahead and let's uh, uh, just keep it uh, left and right, and top and bottom right here. And uh, the moment that uh, we do this, you can see that uh, <laughs> we have, uh, or actually I need to select the other one. You can see that uh, we basically have uh, this uh, um, old model uh, updating with uh, the layout features. And the uh, other thing that we can do actually is to keep uh, the um, keep the scale. So keep it, for example, to center. And I'm going to center this one as well. And as you can see, the moment that I do this, uh, I'm not saying anymore to uh, Figma, hey, this model should uh, uh, stick to the left and the right, but it should uh, keep to the center. So in this case, you can uh, create all sorts of uh, different uh, responsive sizes uh, in uh, just a matter of seconds. So this is going to be really, really useful if uh, you're creating uh, any type of uh, responsive uh, you know, features in Figma. Now, that being said, uh, the another thing that I wanted to show you in this video is the auto layout features. So for example, if I select uh, here and uh, I'm just going to um, cancel this one here and this one here as well, just make it a little bit bigger. And uh, what I want to show you briefly, and by the way, I have an entire video on how to lay out where I go really in depth. So feel free to check it out on my channel. And uh, in order to access the auto layout, you simply need to select all of the elements or have a group selected, like in this case. And uh, you can use uh, Shift plus A or simply click on the auto layout. And as you can see, now we have a few different options because this uh, uh, group of components is now, or of elements, is now a auto layout. So the very first uh, element uh, is the direction. So by default, it's set as vertical direction, which in this case works perfectly fine since it's exactly what we need, all the elements stacked vertically. However, if we click on horizontal, you can see that now all the elements are going to be stacked horizontally. Now, great thing about auto layout is that you can create auto layouts within auto layouts. So if a group of elements needs to be horizontal and other ones need to be vertical, within the same auto layout group, you can mix and match these. So definitely something to keep in mind. Now, the very next option is the spacing between elements. So as you can see, the moment that uh, I increase or decrease the spacing um, between the elements is going to change. So let's just uh, undo this. And another thing which is uh, really cool is the padding uh, between uh, uh, or around the item. So let's say that I want 40 pixels of padding and I can increase this. You can see how the padding inside the auto layout uh, is actually going to change. Now let's uh, keep a padding around these lines. Uh, and another thing that I want to show you is this menu right here, which uh, is essentially telling us uh, where the auto layout is going to sit uh, in between. So I'm going to I'm going to use uh, another example just to make uh, this really clear, really clear since uh, there's quite a few elements here and uh, I want this to be uh, crystal clear for you guys. So say that we have uh, this element and uh, the, these two rectangles and I'm going to use Shift plus A in order to make it an auto layout. I'm going to just increase uh, the size of this element. Now, as you can see, the moment that I change uh, these options, uh, um, the content within uh, the outer layout is going to change as well. And I can even set uh, specific uh, um, pixel, uh, specific values right here in order to create uh, some uh, very specific uh, 
compositions. Now there's also the space between, so if you have different elements, for example, um, you can set these uh, to be spaced between instead of packed. And um, yeah, it's just a matter of experimenting at that point. So this is pretty much it when it comes to the basic features of the auto layout. Another cool thing that I want to remind you is that if, uh, for example, you want to add another input field, you can see that the auto layout now makes it super easy in order to uh, maintain the same proportions, but you can easily add uh, elements without going into the minute details of, uh, you know, changing and adjusting the, the spaces in between and all that. So it's really cool for consistency and for design systems. So really hope this video was helpful and uh, want to remind you that on my channel I have over 500 videos sharing my over decade of experience in UI UX design. So feel free to check it out if you're interested in that and I'll see you in the next video.